project that we conducted, and we had some really fascinating results. So to start off, I'll pose the question to you. How do we define sustainability? Why is this important in the context of, of the world we live in today? There are lots of different definitions that have been given, but generally sustainability concerns the development that meets the needs of the present, that meets the needs of us today, without compromising uh, the ability of future gener generations to, to meet their needs as well. When we consider natural resource management, there are several key tenets which we have to think about. Natural resources represent the materials that occur in nature, naturally outside. It's our, our soils, it's our water, it's our timber, all kinds of things, our precious metals. Natural resource management then involves the human impact on the natural environment. And we have to maintain, slow, okay. We have to maintain the quality of, of, quality of life related to sustainable management. So natural resources then require soil and water conservation. This is imperative. It's one of our most important things that we have to do. So let me take you to Louisiana. We're a long way from Romania if we go to Louisiana. In Louisiana, we have lots of water, uh, lots of surface lakes and bayous and rivers and streams, but we have some problems. Sedimentation of that water. Specifically, when you look at the water, it's kind of brown in its color because it has lots of suspended sediment within the water. Now, Louisiana is characterized by lots of rainfall. It's very humid. And we have highly susceptible soil textures, specifically silty soil textures, which are susceptible to erosion. So the soil erosion then leads to our loss of topsoil. And the topsoil is the best soil that we have for producing crops. It's high in organic matter or humus and is very arable, right? Well, as we look at the, the amount of highways that we have going through Louisiana, these have an impact on soil erosion because they concentrate the runoff. You know, it's, it's an impervious surface that's going to run off and then accelerate the erosion. Furthermore, when we look at highway construction, we're exposing the soil. We're scraping off the surface and we're leaving exposed soil for this heavy rainfall to then wash away. Now when we talk about different types of water pollution, we have two different kinds. Point source, where we know where the pollution is coming from, and non-point source pollution. So non-point source pollution has become a major area of focus in the United States over the last 10 to 15 years. And it includes not only things like oil and metals and bacteria, but sediment. Where is that sediment washing off from? Is it coming from the forest or is it coming from the construction site? Okay. Also, we see lots of different pollutants, heavy metals, hydrocarbons, these sorts of things associated with that non-point source pollution, where we can't identify one specific source. Well, to address this, in the United States, we have what's called the Clean Water Act. And Section 319 of the Clean Water Act specifically calls upon each different state to develop and implement non-point source pollution control programs. So we have to identify in Louisiana or Texas or Michigan, what are the problems there and how is that state going to address them specifically? So these programs then recommend what we call best management practices, BMPs, for addressing these problems of uh, you know, runoff and pollution and these sorts of things. Now there are lots of different suggested best management practices for controlling erosion. These include things such as compost mulch blankets, seeds, roughening the soil surface, silt fences, even things like this straw or hay bales. But you can see some of these are very ineffective. They look great when you put them out, but after a few weeks, after a heavy rainfall, they you know, become decrepit and they're, they're no longer effective. So what we wanted to do was essentially evaluate the use of composted mulch on soil properties as we uh, look at them along roadsides, water quality parameters, and the flow rate runoff and soil loss associated with these sites. So let me take each of these in turn. First of all, here we are in Louisiana, and let me show you where our sites took place. We had one of these in uh, West Feliciana Parish. We call these the Florida parishes, right up in here. And this was along Highway 61. This was in an active construction site. So they were building a new highway, there were tractors moving along, you know, brushing the soil off. And this was where one of our research sites was. The other sites were in Rapides Parish, and we had three different sites here, and these were in an established site. This was no longer under active construction. It was under vegetative cover. Okay. So what we did was we applied different compost mulch treatments. 
We had a control layer down here. It's a little hard to see, but that's just exposed soil. Then over here, we had five centimeters of applied uh, mulch. I think that's chinch, right? And then we had 10 centimeters of applied mulch. And uh, we applied these at the surface. Here you can see some of our plots right along the edge of the highway. Okay. Here we had site one, which was on a 34% slope. And what you'll see is lots of this kind of rutting, you know, where we have real erosion and gully erosion uh, moving into those areas. And then we had sites two, three, and four, which ranged in slope from 25 down to around 10%. <coughs> now, at each of these sites, we applied another factor. Some of the composted mulch we just applied at the surface with a blower truck. Okay? Some of that was left at the surface until another set of samples. We took a rototiller and we mixed the mulch into the soil. Okay? And we wanted to see which is most effective. We didn't know. All right. We established the plots in February of 2010. Here you can see the steel edging that's being used to construct uh, each pair of plots. There you see a control plot with no composted mulch. All of that directs the water into a standard H flume for uh, measuring the runoff. And here's a plot right next to it with 10 centimeters of composted mulch, again, directing the runoff into a flume. In the background here, you can see some of the equipment that we have, which is monitoring the runoff from the flumes. And here you see the blower truck, uh, this gentleman right here with the hose, that's actually blowing the composted mulch out to the site. So let's look at these soil properties first. The field instrumentation that we had included our microstation data loggers, and with those we uh, had both uh, moisture sensors as well as temperature sensors. And we installed these in our composted plots to look and see what the differences would be on soil temperature and soil humidity. We also measured uh, different soil characteristics three times throughout the year within these uh, plots where we had the treatments to include pH, soil organic matter, the soil texture, phosphorus, other elements, as well as a range of different heavy metals. So let me show you some of the results that we got from this. What you're looking at right here is a plot showing the different moisture content and temperature of a 10 centimeter treated plot compared to the control. And what we can see is with regard to moisture content, the areas that had 10 centimeters of composted mulch had dramatically more moisture contained within the plots. If you're talking about a soil that's on a 35% slope, that's really important because when we hit these dry periods in the summer where there's no irrigation or no rainfall, the plants that are there could uh, experience some drought stress. So having this additional moisture is very important. Similarly, we see down here a rather interesting trend. We have the 10 centimeters of uh, composted mulch in this dark red and the control in the pink. And what we found is in the summer, the control soils with no mulch got hotter. Okay? The mulch actually kept the soils cooler at the surface. And in the winter, the mulch kept the soil warmer than the control soils. So some really interesting results. We see similar trends over here at site four. Again, much more humidity retained within the 10 centimeter plot and higher temperatures under the control plot in the summer, cooler temperatures caused by the composted mulch. <laughs> With regard to soil texture, I'll simply show you that uh, we did monitor to see if the soil texture would change over time. Would there be some sort of uh, change in the texture from upslope to downslope as a result of erosion? We didn't see very many differences here, and most of the soil textures were sandy clay loam, clay loam, a few silt loams and loams, uh, sandy loams, these kinds of textures. As far as elemental analysis goes, these are results that we produced using the inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy as well as X-ray fluorescence. And you see we looked at a bunch of different elements here as well as pH and organic matter. What we generally found was that the metal content of these soils in both 2010 and 2012 were quite low. I will point out to you that between 2010 and 2012, the phosphorus content increased. And that was caused by the application of this composted mulch, where phosphorus was brought in. Also, the pH was moderated. It went from being strongly acidic to more of a moderate acidity. And then our soil organic matter content increased, of course, by the addition of the composted mulch. Well, next, let's look at uh, the water quality parameters associated with the study. So I was mentioning some of the field equipment that we used. Uh, we had ISCO samplers here. This is a 
a machine that has a pipe that comes out and when rainfall comes through the flume, it sucks the water up into the instrument and keeps it refrigerated and cold until we actually go and collect it from the field. Here were the standard H flumes that were used. All of this equipment was powered by solar panel arrays in the field. And uh, with each of those different samples, water uh, quality samples that we collected from the runoff, we looked at the salinity, the pH, the total dissolved solids, total suspended solids, turbidity, and biological oxygen demand. Now, this is really important. I want to show you how we were able to pair different plots to achieve different results. For instance, we have the four sites here. One of these are under active construction, the other three under established construction. At each of these sites, we have a tilled and an untilled portion, and we have different application rates. So if we wanted to compare active construction versus established construction, we could do so by looking at these two plots. If we wanted to establish the differences between till versus no-till um, applications, we can look at these two plots, which both have the same amount of composted mulch. If we wanted to look at the difference in mulch thickness, we can use both of these plots. And if we wanted to look at the difference between 5 and 10 centimeters, we can use these two plots. So these were the different combinations that were used to arrive at the results, which I'll show you. So let's take a look at this. This is turbidity. This is an indication of the clarity of the water, if you will, based on how much suspended solid is present. And what you see in red here are the controls. You see that we have lots of turbidity in those samples, compared with our 5 centimeter compost uh, plots. If you compare down below the 5 and 10 centimeter plots, you'll see that the 10 centimeter plots were even more effective. But look at the difference in scale here. Here we're looking at a scale of 600. Up here we're looking at a scale of 1,200. So really some dramatic differences caused by the compost mulch application. If we want to look at differences between active construction versus established, clearly the sites in active construction had more turbidity than the sites which were under uh, established uh, vegetative cover. When we look at tillage versus no tillage, we saw dramatically higher amounts of turbidity coming off of the plots where we had incorporated the mulch with tillage. So it's much better then to just leave the composted mulch at the surface. You don't have to incorporate it. And what we found were lots of significant differences. There were significant differences between active and established construction, light tillage versus no tillage. But I want to point out that the most significant differences were caused by the thickness of the mulch itself. So 5 centimeters versus the control, 10 centimeters versus 5 centimeters. Notice these were the most significant of all the parameters that we evaluated. So finally, the last thing I want to show you is a separate experiment that we did with a controlled flow rate and runoff. Now, to do this, we set up a rainfall simulator on top of each of the plots. And then we essentially used this Tlaloc uh, 3000 portable rainfall simulator. Uh, you see the area that was covered here. We applied rainfall at an intensity of 70 millimeters per hour for 30 minutes. And we used a uh, portable water tank with a pump on a trailer to take it out to these sites and apply the water. Now the experiment was conducted twice, once in April of 2011, another time in May of 2012. And each time we conducted the experiment, we had two pulses. The first pulse was on the dry soil and we let that drain off, and then after that the soil was wet, and we ran it a second time. So for each of those experiments, we have a dry and a wet pulse that we receive. So let me show you what the results look like. Let me, let me paint the picture for you here. First of all, we're looking at the control <coughs> soils, these soils with no composted mulch. When we start to apply the moisture from the rainfall simulator, what we see is a large amount of runoff. And this is what you're looking at here is the runoff on the y-axis and time across the x-axis. And after 30 minutes right here when we shut the, the experiment off, the amount of runoff quickly decreased almost to zero. Same sort of thing that we saw here, okay? A big flux of runoff and then almost no runoff. Now, co compare that to what we have when we have five centimeters of composted mulch. Notice that it takes a longer period of time for the runoff to start and there's not as much runoff occurring. Furthermore, when the experiment stops at 30 minutes, we continue to see drainage off of the site for a much longer period of time because that moisture is being retained by the composted mulch. And furthermore, if we look at the 10 centimeters of composted mulch, look at how these peaks change. 
we can start making the application of rainfall, and it takes 10 minutes before we see any runoff at all. Okay? Then the amount of runoff that we see is less than the control, and when we stop the application of rainfall, it lasts another 60 minutes where we're still receiving just a small amount of runoff. All of this moisture is being held by the composted mulch. When we look at uh, you know, the flow rate between active construction versus established construction, again, we see clear differences. In the active construction areas, a much higher flux. In the established construction, a much lower flux. Let's look at total suspended solids and soil loss. What I want to point out to you here as we look at total suspended solids on the y-axis are the different scales that these are at. The control here has um, milligrams per liter of 6,000 at the top of this scale. For 5 centimeters here, we're at 1,000. For 10 centimeters, we're at 300. Okay? So you can see there are huge differences in the amount of soil that runs off of these sites based on uh, the thickness of the composted mulch. And we see the most runoff occurring, these total suspended solids, under the control plots. And of course, the 10 centimeter plots provide the best protection, but even 5 centimeters provides dramatic improvement over the control. <coughs> so, in conclusion, the application of composted mulch improved soil water content and moderated soil temperature compared to bare soil. <coughs> composted mulch application improved the quality of the water by reducing total suspended solids and turbidity. The flow rate, the runoff volume, and the soil loss were successfully reduced by the application of composted mulch. As organic materials were used, the soil organic matter content increased within the experimental period in the soil itself. And tillage, as well as construction activities, significantly reduced the effectiveness of the composted mulch uh, as an erosion control best management practice. If you want to see more information about these studies, we have one of our papers published in the Journal of Hydrology. It's entitled Evaluation of Compost Mulch as Highway Embankment Erosion Control in Louisiana at the Plot Scale. We have two other papers that are currently under preparation. One will be published in Soil Tillage and Research, the other in Soil Horizons, hopefully this coming year. Our recommendations then, for sustainable roadsides, uh, 10 centimeters provides the best possible protection. But considering the, the cost-benefit ratio, 5 centimeters is generally adequate and may provide the best protection for the amount of money that you have to spend. Tillage incorporation is not recommended as this reduced the effectiveness of those different erosion control measures. To protect surface water quality from this construction erosion, more caution should be taken during construction activities along roadsides. They have to really try to not disturb the surface so much. And this compost mulch coverage is recommended as a best management practice in both construction areas as well as other areas that are prone to erosion along roadsides. With that, I would like to acknowledge those who contributed to this project to include the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development, and the U.S. Composting Council. Our compost and mulch product was received from Bob's Tree Preservation. So, with that, I thank you. I'll say, Bob Wilson,